below are given the gain in weights in kilograms of cows fed on two diets X and Y. Diet X increases the weight by 25, 32, 30, 32, 24, 14 and 32 kilograms. Whereas diet Y increases the weight by 24, 34, 22, 30, 42, 31, 40, 30, 32 and 35 kilograms. The first sample size is 7 and the second sample size is 10. Test at 5% level whether the two diets differ as regard to their effect on mean increase in weight. So this is again case of t-test difference between two means because sample size 7 as well as 10 and number 2 there is no information about the population standard deviations so this is the case where population standard deviations are not known okay but no information about any parameter no x bar 1 x bar 2 no s1 square s2 square readily available so first we have to find out all these things let us take diet x as x1 or you can take it y 25 32 30 32 24 14 and 32 the summation is 189 right sigma x1 so x bar 1 comes to 189 divided by 7 so x bar 1 is 27 so we can subtract 27 and we can use the way of x bar 1 minus x1 minus x bar 1. 25 minus 27 minus 2. 32 minus 27. It is not minus but positive 5, positive 3, positive 5 again, negative 3, 14 means negative 13, and 32 means again positive 5. Just verify that the summation of x minus x bar is 0 or not. It must be 0. Positive numbers are 5, 3 and 5 and 5. So it is 18 and negative numbers 16 plus 2, 18. Positive, negative, 18, 0. Then it is advisable to go for x1 minus x bar 1 whole square. It is not necessary to write the total of this curve. But always verify that it is 0 or not. It must be 0. If it is not 0, check the column. One or more numbers can be wrong. First correct them, get the total 0 and then only go for squared values. 4, 25, 9, 25, 9, 169 and 25. 266. That is sigma x1 minus x bar 1 whole square. Now, y diet y or say x2, the value is given to be 24, 34, 22, 30, 42, 31, 40, 30, 32 and 35. The sum is 320. Sigma x2. So, x bar 2 comes to 320 divided by 10, 32, x bar 2. Now, we have x bar 1 and x bar 2. Again, the mean is integer. We can use x2 minus x bar 2. 24 minus 32 minus 8, then 2, then minus 10, then minus 2, positive 10. Negative 1, positive 8, negative 10, 0 and positive 3. 18, 20, 21, 31. 11, 18. Yes. Is it 0 or not? First of all, check it. It must be 0. 23, 20, it is not x, 
actually 0 according to minus 8, 2, minus 10, minus 2 is right, positive 10, minus 1, minus positive 8, 8, minus 10, 0 and 3. Minus 8. No, it is not correct. Something is wrong there. 24 minus 32, minus 8. 34 minus 32, 2. Minus 10, minus 2. It is positive 10, okay. It is negative 1. It is positive 8. It is minus 10. It should be minus 2, right? Okay. So now it should be 0. First, always verify. This was actually very good test case. As far as you do not get 0 here, don't go for further calculations. Never do it. First, always get 0 in correct way. Then only go for squared values. Twenty-three negative and positive is twenty-three. So now we have obtained zero because the summation of deviations taken from mean is always zero. It must be zero. So this is a nice checkpoint against you. Now squared values sixty-four, four, one hundred, four, one hundred. 164, 4, 0 and 9. 50. 350. This is sigma x2 minus x bar 2. Now we have sigma x1 minus x bar 1 whole square and sigma x2 minus x bar 2 whole square. So now we can calculate directly s cap square. Now we have we have sigma x1 minus x bar 1 whole square and sigma x2 minus x bar 2 whole square. So we can calculate s cap square directly. There is no need to calculate s1 square and s2 square because logically the formula can be written in this way too. Plus 350 divided by 7 plus 10 minus 2. The summation is 616, is it? Yes. Divided by 7 plus 10, 17 minus 2, 15. So it is 41.07 or 067. This is S cap square. So now we have all five things or say all three things which we require to substitute in the formula x bar 1, x bar 2, sample size, s cap square, everything. So let us first prepare the list so that we can visualize the formula which can be used. Always follow this pattern in your examination. First always prepare the list of the available data that will help you to visualize the formula and on the basis of the visualization of the formula you can select the right test. So n1 is 7, x bar 1 is 27, n2 is 10, x bar 2 is 32 and now directly write s cap square. What was it? S Four one point point zero six seven zero, zero six seven. seven. Yes. Okay. Test at five percent level whether the two diets differ as regards to their effect on mean increase in weight. So now the hypothesis is always for no difference. As I earlier stated, it is also known as no difference hypothesis. The two diet do not differ significantly or do not differ as regards to their effect on mean increase in weight. 
hcho mu1 equals to mu2 or in other words mu1 minus mu2 equals to 0 the difference is 0 alternative hypothesis the question is direct no directional term or indicative term for one tail test test whether the two diets differ so we have to treat this as two tail test the two diet differ significantly as regards to their effect on mean increase in weight see the term increase is actually not for indication of one tail test the entire data x1 as well as x2 or say diet x diet y all the two columns actually show increase in weight of the cows so the data is about increase in weight of the cows that means the term increase is not the indicative term or directional term for one tail test the hypothesis related wordings are very simple test at 5% level whether the two diet differ so we can show that the two diet do not differ and the two diet differ HA mu1 is not equal to mu2 or mu1 minus mu2 is not equal to 0 that means two tail test level of significance equals to it is given to be 5 percent so alpha is 0 0.05 alpha by 2 must be 0 0.025 degrees of freedom n1 plus n2 minus 1 7 plus 10 minus sorry not minus 1 minus 2 it is nothing but summation of n1 minus 1 and n2 minus 1 50 degrees of freedom 15 so row of 15 and Alpha by 2 is 0 0.025. Yes, critical value of t equals to 2.131. Now calculation of t. X bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus mu 1 minus mu 2 upon under root s cap square upon n1 plus s cap square upon n2 x bar 1 is 27 minus x bar 2 32 minus difference between two population means 0 according to Arnold hypothesis upon under root 41.067 divided by 7 plus 41.067 divided by 10 it is minus 5 upon so and so again my suggestion is use memory of your calculator 41.067 divided by 7 equal to memory plus 41.067 divided by 10 equal to memory plus then memory recall and then square root what is it Carefully use the memory. 3.158. 3.158. So 5 or rather minus 5 divided by 3.15. You can directly take 5 instead of minus 5 because ultimately we are going to use modulus. 1.5832. 1 1.5832 or 3. So modulus T is 1.583. Now comparison and conclusion, T calculated 1.583, T critical 
That means after a long time calculated T is less than the critical value. So the null hypothesis is not rejected. Conclusion will be the null hypothesis itself mu1 equals to mu2 that means the two diets do not differ significantly or do not differ as regards to their effect on mean increase in weight. Both are more or less with similar effect, here, effect on the increase of weights of cows.